Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I am your host, Rob Dial, and if you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast episode. And if you're out there and you love this podcast, please do me a massive favor. Give us a rating and review on whatever platform you're listening to this on. If you're listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, just give us a rating and review. The reason why is because the more positive rating and reviews that we get, the more that they actually show this to people who have never listened to us before. And that way the podcast can grow. So if you would do that, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Today, I'm going to be talking about five hobbies that you need to create or strengthen in order to change your life. When you look at your life, there's really not a whole lot of things you need to do to change it. And before I talk about this, this is what I'm th- one thing I want to say. There's nothing wrong with your life as it is. If you're going into it trying to fix something or you think that something is wrong in your life, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going into self-development. I want to find out these hobbies so that I can fix all of the BS in my life. There's nothing wrong. The only thing that's wrong is that we think that there's something wrong. Everything in life, whether it's good, whether it's bad, struggle, challenge, all of it is good for you in some sort of way. All of it is beneficial. Let's put it this way. Instead of good or bad, it is beneficial for the expansive human being that you are. It is something that is brought to you, the challenge, the opportunity, whatever it is to make you more of an expansive being, to expand into a greater version of you. Now, with that being said, Uh, there's nothing wrong with you. And so I want to go into this episode not saying like, hey, develop these five hobbies because you're completely screwed up. That's not what I want to say. I want to say develop these five hobbies so that you can expand into a greater version of yourself. Okay, so we're going to go through these five hobbies and I want you to figure out through each of them, if you have pen and paper, you can pull it out and you can start jotting down what are these five hobbies that you want to create and just throw some ideas down as I'm speaking about them, okay? The first hobby that you need to create in order to change your life You need one hobby to make you money. One hobby to make you money. What is something that would be a fun way to make money? Now, you have to realize there's many ways, like there's crazy ways to make, there's over, there's millions of dollars, millions of ways to make millions of dollars. Most people just think, oh, I have to go work for somebody else. Yeah, you can if you want, but you can also make money other ways as well. Now, People who listen to my podcast and I always get messages are like, Rob, I have an entire family. I have bills I have to pay. I have a mortgage. I have car insurance, all of this stuff. I get it. But can you decide if you don't want to be at that job anymore that you will create some sort of transition plan to do what it is that you want to do in the next few years if you don't want to be doing that anymore? Or can you find a job if you do want to have a job and you do want to work for someone else? Can you have a job that feels fun, that feels like a hobby? So when I say you need to develop a hobby that makes you money, I'll give you a couple of examples off the top of my head. What I do feels like a hobby. Like I love what I do. If I got paid nothing to do what I do, which I, for years, this podcast, I got paid nothing to put this podcast on. I just did it. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes because it just felt right. But it also pushed me to grow myself more, to learn more about humans and about myself so that I could therefore teach it as well. I love doing this. I love learning about humans. I love reading about neurology and psychology and early childhood development and trauma and how we become the people that we are because then it's like a big puzzle that we're putting together. But can you find a hobby that makes you money? Another example that I can think of that's quite simple is, let's say that you love, you love making jewelry, right? There's just something about it. Or maybe, maybe you've never even made jewelry before but there's something that feels intriguing to you about like you feel an energetic pull towards learning about this thing well maybe what you do is you go you know what i'm gonna go and i'm gonna start you know there's jewelry making classes all over there's jewelry making classes online i'm gonna take some jewelry making classes and i'm gonna try to learn how to make jewelry and you start making it and you're not doing it first off because you want to make money you're doing it because it's fun you're doing it because it's it feels exciting to you to do this and so you make some jewelry and they go you know what Maybe I'll start an Etsy store. You start selling some jewelry. Maybe I'll go to a farmer's market. Like the thing that I love about farmer's markets, we go to one every single Sunday, is everybody there has basically figured out a way to make money off of a hobby, right? So there's like, there's a bunch of different jewelry ladies that are there and they make all this different jewelry and all ladies go buy jewelry from them. There's a lady there that bakes the most amazing stuff with very low sugar and no gluten and no preservatives and all that stuff. And she just loves this stuff. So she's obsessed with it. And she created a business around it. It's awesome. There's another guy that's there and he loves farming. 
And so we get our eggs from him. There's another lady that's that's there and her and her husband also love farming. They love raising cattle and they have like 40 different cattle on their property and they roam freely and they're butchers. Right. So it's like they found there's another guy there that loves coffee. And so he's developed his own system of roasting coffee and creating coffee. There's another person there that loves juice. And so they created this incredible juice that they make. And so there's another guy that loves honey and he like bees. And so he's literally makes honey and he makes all these different types of honey that are mixed with like lavender and all kinds of amazing stuff. But what you're looking at is somebody who found a hobby and then found a way to make money off of it. Right. So is there some sort of hobby out there? that maybe you're making money off of it now, maybe you're not, but you feel an energetic pull to learn and get better at this thing. And if you can find that thing, I want you to pursue it. Can you find a hobby that can make you some money? And maybe it becomes your full-time gig. Maybe it just becomes a thing that you do on the side and it brings you some extra revenue. And now you can take your kids and your family to a cool trip once a year because you put so much time into your hobby. But you need to have one hobby that makes you money. The second hobby that you need to have is a hobby that keeps you healthy and in shape. So this could be many different things. Maybe it's working out, but for some people, they just don't like working out. Who said that in order to be healthy, you have to work out? That's not it at all. Maybe you love going for jogs and you just say, you know what? I'm going to do this every single day. That's going to keep you a lot healthier. Maybe you do love lifting. I was watching a, a thing the other day. A guy was talking about a study that said people over the age of 60 that lift heavy weights, have a four, heavy weights twice a week, have a 40% less chance of dying of anything but old age than people who don't lift weights heavy twice per week. What? That's crazy. They just have to lift heavy things for a little while twice a week. And they have a 47% chance of living longer than everybody else that just and, and actually getting to old age versus having a heart issue or having some sort of issues with their body, right? So maybe it's going for walks. Maybe it's going for a jog. Maybe you love soccer. Can you go and to go get a part of a rec league or uh, go out to, you get, if you, you love soccer, you love basketball, there's like rec leagues, there's baseball that you could do, there's flag football. There's so many different rec leagues that you could join that are probably in your area. There's some community center, there's some YMCA that you could join and you could use that as a way to be healthy. You don't ever have to step foot in a gym if you don't want to. But can you find some sort of hobby to keep you healthy and in shape so that you can live longer? Okay, next hobby. That was hobby number two. Next hobby, hobby number three is a creative outlet. I personally believe, having talked to thousands and thousands of people and coached tons of people over you know 16 years now, that one of the things that, that really, really restricts people's happiness in life is that they don't have any creative outlet. They don't have any outlet to put their creativity into the world. I personally believe that we are creative beings. Part of the reason why we are here is to create. We are part of this ultimate creator and we are here to create amazing things, whatever it is. Maybe it's that you wanna do painting. Maybe it's that you love making music. Maybe it's you love taking photos. Maybe it's you love uh, editing video. Maybe that you love, uh, maybe you don't love making music, but maybe you love producing music. Whatever it is, can you find some sort of creative outlet? Maybe you love just having a spinning wheel and making clay pots. There's so many different ways for you to have a creative outlet. So let me ask you this question. If you don't have that creative outlet, is there something top of mind for you that you feel an energetic pull to learning more about or developing your skills in or trying to be more creative in? Maybe you love woodworking and you're like, screw it. I'm just going to make some cool shit with wood. I'm just going to build some furniture around the house. Maybe I'll just build some furniture and throw it up online, which takes number one as well, which is a, a, a hobby to make you money. And maybe you just say, you know what? Let me see if I can figure out a way to create some cool stuff. I personally believe that every single human is creative. So if someone's like, oh, I'm not really that creative. I don't think that you're not creative. I just think that you haven't found the thing that brings out that creativity. Maybe you love writing and you don't realize it. Maybe you love sketching and you don't realize it. Maybe you love painting and you don't realize it. There's so many different creative outlets that you could have and you just need to figure out which one it is for you. Because if you're keeping in your creativity and you're holding all that creativity in, it's like needing to cry and not letting it out. It's like a ener restricting the energy inside of you and the energy should be put out into the world. So there's creative energy that's blocked. It's dammed up because you haven't figured out that thing that makes you creative. So the third one is you need to have some sort of creative outlet. 
Okay. Next one, you need to have a hobby. So number four is you need to have a hobby to build your knowledge and improve your intelligence. To build your knowledge and improve your intelligence. For some people, this might be reading. For some people, it might be that you want to go back and take some night classes. That's one of the cool things about college. One of the few things, in my opinion, I think is cool about college is you can go back and take night classes for pretty much anything that you want to learn. There's also Skillshare. You know, Skillshare, you can go online and learn pretty much almost anything that you want to. There's YouTube. There's so many different ways to build and improve your intelligence and your knowledge as a person. I was reading a, a quote the other day pretty wild quote. And I think I've, I've mentioned on the podcast in the past couple months. And they said that 33% of high school graduates never read another book after graduating high school. So if someone, you know, lives to 88 years old and they get out of high school at 18 years old for 70 years, they don't read a book. That's crazy. And then that's 33% of high school graduates, 42% of college graduates never read another book. And so think about this. If you're trying to, if you feel, I personally believe in one of my mentors, first mentors you always, used to always say this, you're either green and growing or you're brown and dying. If you're not growing your intelligence and your knowledge base, you're, if you're not green and growing, you're brown and dying. And so it's, you're, there, you're never in a place where you're not going forward. You're either going forward, and if you feel like you're stagnant, stagnant is actually going backwards. Why? Because you're, going, you're not just staying in the exact same place. You're getting older and staying in the exact same place. You're going backwards. You're not improving yourself. You're living the exact same year that you've been living over and over and over again since you were 19 years old. You know, so you can meet people that are 39, but they still have the exact same intelligence that they did at 19. Is that improvement? Not really. So can you find some sort of hobby it doesn't have to be just reading books. There's many ways to develop your knowledge and improve your intelligence. Can you hire a coach to help you with that? Do you want to learn a language? That's another way to improve your intelligence. And do you want to learn a language and then go to another country and do it that way? How can you make sure that you're constantly evolving yourself in your brain? Because the, the phrase is 100% true. And I've heard many neurologists say this. If you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're not constantly trying to evolve your brain, there's just parts of your brain that are just like, yeah, we're just going to chill. We're not going to do much more. We're going to stay here, right? So have a hobby that improves your knowledge and your, intelligent, your intelligence. And then the last one, number five, is a hobby to improve your mindset, to improve your mindset, to improve the being that you are. So when I say mindset, I don't mean the same thing as intelligence or knowledge. When I say mindset, I mean improvement of the actual human that you are the childhood trauma that you might have incurred, the things that you haven't overcome, the relationship issues that you need to improve at, the um, issues with your parents that happened when you were younger and you still haven't talked to them about it. What do you need to do to improve your mindset? Do you need to hire a coach? Do you need to read more books? Do you need to go to a men's group? Do you need to go to a women's group? You know, if you happen to feel like maybe, you know what, I, I drink a little bit too much alcohol, maybe you need to go to an Alcoholics Anonymous to help you with it. Can you find some sort of uh, way to improve your mindset so that you are constantly evolving as a human. You're constantly getting better. Because if you think about this, think about this for a second. And some people are going to say, well, what about one about relationships? I think that most of your relationships improve when you do all of these things because you as a human improve. And so when you look at relationships, that's very external, right? Majority of these things happen to do with you as a person improving and finding ways to improve. And so these are the five things I think that if you really want to change your life, you only need one hobby in each one of these things. Something that you do weekly, something that you do four times a week, three times a week, whatever it is. Number one is you need a hobby to make you money. You need to figure that out. You need to make sure that you're not constantly relying on somebody else. Number two, you need a hobby that's going to keep you healthy and in shape. Number three, you need a hobby that is a creative outlet for you. Number four, you need a hobby that builds your knowledge and improves your intelligence. And number five, you need one hobby to improve your mindset. And if you do this, I guarantee you, evolving and improving the being that you are becomes fun. Why? Because hobbies are something that's fun to do. It doesn't feel like a task. It doesn't feel like a chore. And if you work on these five, five hobbies and fast forward a year, two years, five years, 10 years down the road, all five of these will help you become a better person.
So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me in it. Rob Dial Jr. R O B D I A L J R. And I'm going to leave the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you, and I hope that you have an amazing day.